So, whatever I explained this discharge, it sustained inside this guy, the white bright regions. So, the continuous discharge leading to a collision of the energy carriers. What are the energy carriers in this case? Electrons and ions, right? See, the path of the electrons and ions is determined by your polarity, whether you want to keep the electrode positive or your workpiece a positive, right? Based on your polarity of your electrode and base material, the electrons would be travelling from the cathode to anode, negative to positive. So, in the cathode, you have electrode generation, cathode emits electrons, right? So, emitted electrons from the cathode would travel to anode. So, for example, in this case, so I make this guy, my the, the electrode is negative, okay? And you have a, this is positive terminal and this is negative terminal. Now, what will happen now? The cathode, in this case, is my tungsten. So, the, the cathode, what will do? The, the main function of cathode is to, to emit electrons, right? So, how it is going to emit the electrons? We will see what are the mechanisms. But now, we can see that the moment you make this, the tungsten, in this case, this is the electrode, negative, the obviously the electrons would, would be emitted from the electrode, it will travel towards the base material, which is positive anode. Isn't it? Similarly, the ions which are generated because of the discharge would travel towards the electrode, right? So, your electrons will be travelling from the cathode to anode, the ions would be travelling to anode to cathode and this is extremely important. Why? Because the energy generation or energy transfer is determined by the motion of the energy carriers. So, generally the electrons because of its mass and number of electrons, the density, we always carry more energy, more heat with the electrons, right? The ions, they are very heavy, okay? So, even if it has one electron collides with one ion, the electron may get heated up because of the mass, very tiny mass compared to ions. Ions are all what? Gas atoms, isn't it? The electrons are very tiny compared to the mass of the ions will be very, very, very high compared to the mass of the electron. So, when the collision happens, whether it is inelastic collision or elastic collision, the, when, the, when the energy is transferred because of this collision, the electrons will be heated much more than the ions because of the mass. So, when the electrons travel, they also carry lot amount of heat than ion. So, in this case, it is extremely important in building case, the polarity, because wherever the electrons go, it is superheated or temperature will be high, okay? So, in this case, so I have electronegative. Where would the temperature would be high? In the? In the workpiece, right? It is clear, right? Suppose if you are using, in this case, like for example, I use a non-consumable electrode. That means, the electrode is not melting. So, it is always advisable to use when you are using a non-consumable electrode and that electrode as a negative. That means that the electrons will be emitted from the electrode, will be sent to the workpiece and workpiece temperature can go high. If you reverse the polarity, what will happen? The electrodes will reach the, the electrodes, the, the electrons will reach the electrodes. So, then that is not good for non-consumable electrode, right? So, you will end up damaging the eroding the electrode much faster. So, if you use EP, the electrode positive, 
whereas that is beneficial if you use a consumable welding process okay. So, if in consumable welding process suppose if you have filler wire which should be molten right. So, then it is advisable to make your consumable wire into positive. So, electrons can reach. So, you melt more the heat is transferred more right it is clear. The ions is in some cases you also need to send more ions because ions are heavy. So, when the ions bombard you also clean the surface okay ion bombardment we use ion milling. So, what do, what do you do in ion milling? Basically you generate ions and you send the ions to erode the surface right. So, suppose if you are uh, trying to weld a material which has a strong, strong oxide layer can you give an example? Aluminium. aluminium. So, in aluminium case you have a, a strong oxide layer. So, in that case you need to remove the oxide layer is not it? That means that if you bombard with ions it is good for you because you are also cleaning the surface. But then if you make that then you also reduce the heat. Suppose if you make your work piece negative when you are doing welding aluminum all the ions will reach the surface. So, the surface will be very clean but you are also sacrificing the penetration is not it. So, then what do we do not increase efficiency we will use AC current the alternating current that means that the polarity is switched in each cycle. So, we get both advantages heating as well as cleaning. So, that is why the welding of aluminum it is in most of the cases we use alternating current it is advisable because we need both actions. So, we need to clean the surface as well as we should also transfer heat right you need to melt. So, you need to make a penetration right. So, instead of switching the polarity so we have alternating current use an AC. So, every time every cycle you also heat one cycle in other cycle you clean right. So, say suppose if you want to weld an, 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 an a steel you can use DC if you use consumer welding process okay. So, you can make the consumable negative uh, sorry uh, uh, positive or negative does not matter. So, based on your penetration in non consumer welding process it is always advisable to have electrode negative. So, that you do not superheat you do not erode the electrode yes it is clear. So, and before that I will show you an arc in real life. Yes, will you look at it? Okay, so these uh, videos I am going to show you, they are all made with high speed camera because the phenomena that is happening here are extremely rapid. So, we need to if you use a cell phone camera, which uh, always my students use to take some pictures, which I really hate. So, if if you use a proper high speed camera, so you can look at the actions in very clearly, right. So, I am going to show you one video. So, where we use uh, a non consumable and uh, a tungsten electrode to strike an arc. So, you can appreciate how arc work, how does arc work right. So, what you see over here? So, this is your electrode and we are melting aluminum. So, the arc is struck here okay. So, because of the heat is transferred from the arc by conduction convection radiation we locally melt the material and if you have a joint here for example, here the interface the interface is molten by the action of arc and then when it solidifies the interface becomes 1 yes is clear. So, again in this case the all the actions the discharge the collision the generation of electrons and ions they are all 
happening in a sustained rate continuously and because of that the arc temperature increases and then that heat is transferred by conduction convection radiation to the work piece and due to that your the work piece the interface is molten and in, when it solidifies the two interfaces becomes one interface. So, what is important here if you want to understand how the heat is generated we need to look at what are the components in inside the arc. So, as already explained you can make either uh, the electrode positive or negative ok it does not matter. So, whether you want to melt the electrode or you want to keep the electrode safe for long time. Suppose assuming if we make the electrode positive and the work piece negative. So, which is cathode here? Work piece is cathode and the electrode is anode. So, in this case what will happen to electrodes uh, the electrons? Electrons will be generated in the cathode and they will be travelling and if you look at in this condition inside the arc there are three distinct regions. The three regions you can clearly see ok. The regions which are just above the cathode which is characterized by the accumulation of ions is not it? The ions whatever it is there generated would start accumulating on the surface of the cathode because the positively charged energy carrier would go and accumulate the negative cathode terminal right. So, the ions would tend to go and accumulate the surface of the cathode whereas, the electrons would tend to go and accumulate the anode the positive terminal is not it right. The regions are extremely small for example, the region just above the anode <coughs> surface is known as anode fall zone ok. The region just above the cathode which is cathode fall zone. Why these are very important these is, uh, regions are very important is because of these uh, the accumulation of ions and electrons the voltage cannot be constant because the charge is always accumulating. So, we defined the, the voltage should be sustained. So, in these regions if you look at so, this is the voltage as a distance the height ok or you can say the distance. In the cathode and anode fall zone because of the accumulation of ions and the electrons respectively you will have a steep temperature gradient in these regions ok. Whereas, the third region which is known as arc column in arc column you will have more or less a constant voltage because the number density is more or less equal number density between the ions and the electrons will be more or less equal ok. So, if that is equal obviously, you have a, a steady or equal voltage a slight increase I mean that is negligible ok. So, this is very important to understand before going into detail these three regions how these three regions work because the heat generation inside the arc is determined by the the physics or fundamental physical phenomena that are happening in these, these three regions ok. So, the stability of these three regions would determine your arc stability. So, so, when you always say that in arc welding so, the stability of arc is extremely important. So, the stability of arc how you change these voltages suppose if you have a very steep voltage gradient in the tip of the anode then you have a problem ok that will lead to the 
expansion contraction and irregular expansion contraction since your whole your arc will not be stable. The same goes with the cathode fault zone. Okay. The arc column is generally neutral. Okay. We can assume that it is neutral, but it is not really neutral because always the electron density will be higher. Okay. But it is negligible. Then because of that we have a steady voltage, constant voltage. Okay. So, this is important to understand before going into detail in the arc inside when you look at the arc inside we have three distinctive regions anode fall zone that the surface of the anode which is positive terminal and the anode fall zone would have accumulation of electrons. Cathode fall zone which is on the surface of cathode which will have accumulation of ions and then R column, R column is mostly electrically neutral because the energy density, the, uh, the number density is more or less equal. Right? And due to this accumulation you have a voltage gradient in the anode and cathode regions. Right? We look at one by one, first look at the anode fall zone and before that I already explained this, the polarity, the effect of polarity. You can either make your electrode positive or negative. So, in first case we have electrode is negative. If the electrode is negative what will happen? The ions would go and accumulate. Okay. So, if this is negative, electrode negative. So, the ions would travel towards electrodes and then electrons will travel toward base material. So, as I explained because of the mass the electrons carry more heat. So, obviously you will have a, a larger penetration right. Ions would reach the electrode which is also ok if you use non consumable electrode right your tip would become stable. And this is beneficial if you use non consumable welding process for example, GTAW where your tungsten electrodes should be there, you should be melting tungsten, tungsten. So, then you will allow your weld with tungsten, so then, then you will make exotic weld with tungsten. So, if you are uh, not be careful in polarity selection, if you are doing GTAW gas tungsten arc welding and you will also make exotic weld, it can change the properties of the weld, then you end up melting the electrode. Okay. So, polarity is extremely important, the polarity of weld because that determines the path of the energy carriers whether you are transporting electrons or ions towards the electrode will be determined by the polarity. So, if you want to make a deep penetration weld in a, in a non consumable welding process you use an electrode negative which is known as for example, if you use DC current straight polarity. So, DC SP, SP means straight. Okay. So, what is DC? Direct current, right. So, in this process no cleaning action because the surface is not cleaned, the ions are heavier. If ions bombard then you have a strong cleaning, electrons carry heat, ions carry momentum. Okay. So, if you bombard with ion you have a very cleaning, good cleaning action. So, if you use electro negative ions would reach the electrode, the electrons will reach the work piece that means that you, the cleaning action may not be there, but you will have a, a deep penetration. Okay, so, the majority of heat is transferred by the electrons to the work piece. Okay, so, and then due, due to that you will have also excellent electrode current capacity because the electrode shape does not change, you are not heating the electrodes as good as in this case. So, in this case if you use electrode positive then what will happen? The electrons will reach the electrode. So, then you will end up superheating compared to this case and in this case you will end up transferring the electrons from the work piece to the consumable and due to that you will end up heating the electro the electrodes much more 
than in this case. And in this case, we are also transferring ions towards the workpiece. That means that you will have a very good cleaning because of the ion bombardment. Okay. So, majority of heat is transferred to the electrode because of the electrons. And due to that, we will also superheat the electrodes. And it is good if you use the consumer welding process because you also need to melt. But it is not good if you want to use a deeper penetration weld. Okay, so, you are also sacrificing the penetration, depth of penetration. Right? So, you can choose ju judicially what polarity you want to use. Some cases, this is also beneficial. Suppose if you are applying, if you are doing an, uh, just surface cladding, okay, in surface cladding application, you should minimize the damage you are doing to the microstructure. Sorry, I use the word microstructure, but still you can uh, visualize. So, in surface cladding, so you do not need to penetrate, you do not need to melt, whereas you just need to heat, but you need to deposit more and more filler to the workpiece. That means that this polarity can be very useful, right? And if you are welding a material with thick oxides for aluminum, so you also need to have a reasonable penetration and you also need to do a cleaning. So then it is good to use alternating current, is not it? So, where the, the path of electrons and ions are switched because you change the polarity in every cycle, every current cycle. Okay? So, cleaning happens in every half cycle and you also heat the workpiece and electrode equally. Right? So, that is what aluminum welding is always advisable to use AC because the efficiency is very high. Right? And you also have a reasonable current capacity. Right? It is clear? It is good. 